I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all the wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. We welcome you once again, those who are tuning in to Lighthouse Missionary Baptist Church morning worship service. And at this time, we will have a hymn of praise. Those who are tuning in, we are singing old hymn from hymn of, if you all should know, holy, holy, holy. Those you know the words can sing along with us. Um, do whatever you are being led by the Spirit to do as we lift up the name of Jesus with holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. <coughs> holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the blessed sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which were then on and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. <coughs> Scripture lesson this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 24. Again, that's Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through verse 24. Genesis chapter 22. Verses 1 to 24. <laughs> and it changed that is verse 1 to 17. Said to him, Abraham. 
here am I, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. On a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took him, he took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I, go, while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they had reached the place where God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. <clears throat> then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay him, to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your own, your son, your only son. Abraham looked up. And there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham, or Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld just your son, your only son, I will bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Here is reading the reading of our scripture lesson from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 24. May God bless and edify to all of our hearts the reading of his holy word. Amen. We have another hymn at this time. Invite you all to stay with us, M164. Those of you at home, or wherever you may be, who are tuning in, that know this hymn, one of the old hymns of the 
of the church, I have decided to follow Jesus. We join in as we sing to the word of God. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Will no one join me till I will follow? Will no one join me till I will follow? No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Enjoy and rejoice in your great sunshine. 
Lord, you know everything that's on my heart that you want to go on Babsley Street, um, the situation with the repairs for the two buildings and for the courtyard. Just continue to look after this church and everything that we need to then see. And in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
We will just begin praying yes. for 2020. So bless, Father, our efforts and our aim and all that we do, that at the end of the day, Father, when all is said and done and the benediction has been given, that you have been given all praise, all honor, and all glory. Of course, in your master's name, we do praise, pray, and ask these and all things for thanksgiving. Amen. <clears throat> we come to a time uh, when we get back to God and we ask the ushers to begin preparing themselves to receive our tithes and offering. Remember, the more blessed to be able to receive. All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, as Do not pass me by. 
you have not withheld your son, your only son. And Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. God is testing our resolve. Many times as we travel through life, we often run into what we many times consider a brick wall. Because it's, it's one of those things that we just cannot understand. One of those things that's causing us so much problems. I mean, we many times wonder to ourselves whether it's even worth it to continue on in our journey in the life. It's almost like saying that it seems as though whenever we take three steps forward, we always seem to be not four steps back. The interesting thing, Lighthouse, 
is that in the midst of our frustrations, you see, that we never take the time to consider that God may be testing us, that he may be testing our resolve. But the truth of the matter is God will test us time and time again as we journey through life. You see, whether or not we are what we claim we are, and whether we are true to our faith in him. Abraham is one, one of our greatest examples of one having their faith tested. And the other is Job. What we see with Abraham is a man who has dedicated his life to God, but also a man who had been blessed with great wealth and a devoted family. While the Bible does not tell us any detail about the interactions that Abraham had with his family, when God called Abraham to leave the land that he knew, apparently one, the land that he had spent most of his life in and raised his family to a country that God would show him. We can safely say, Lighthouse, that his family was a devoted family. And although we, although we don't know what was said when Abraham posted the family, told them what God had told them to do. Although we can imagine white had a little something to say about that. God told you what? You know how long we've been here? All my friends are here, and you so come tell me that God said we need to pick up and go to a land where he'll show us. But they went with Abraham. Lock, stock, and barrel. And so we have to say that they were a, a devoted family, devoted to him and to whatever God had told or instructed him to do. In Lighthouse, we can also say that this was the first test of Abraham's resolve. Abraham could easily told God, I like where I am. I don't see the necessity of moving. I don't want to leave from here and go up to there and put my family through some unnecessary trauma. But he did as God called him to do. But it is the greatest test of Abraham's faith or his resolve to serve Almighty God. That is the focus of our message today. Abraham and his family had settled in the new land and had gotten into a routine doing what they had to do on a daily basis. When God spoke to Abraham once again and asked him to take his son, his only son, and to go to the area or the region of Moriah and sacrifice him on the mountain that he will show him. Abraham didn't question it, but in his mind began to make preparations to do as God had called them to do. But many men like us, we have stopped dead in their tracks and questioned God as to what he was instructing them to do. Especially when it involved them sacrificing their only sons. They would not have taken the time like Abraham and to look past God's request and to see that God was in control and would provide that which was needed for the sacrifice. Even if they didn't understand. Them. 
what God was requesting of them. I was surmised like I was dead. There will be many refusals. That this request would result in many men walking away from their faith. And even accusing God of trying to take away something that they truly love. The fact of the matter lighthouse is that Abraham knew that God was testing his resolve. That it was once again testing his faith. Because I know that Abraham, God was preparing him for a greater blessing. Just know like how that God will test us as we travel through this life. He will test our resolve and our faith. He will test our obedience. He will test our patience. He will test our faith and belief. Also, he will see through a test if he succumb to the sins of this world. The question is, as we begin to close, is whether we will come out victorious like Abraham and be used to God's glory and be rewarded for our faith in him, or will we utterly fail and be cast aside as unusable by God? As we close today, I want to leave you with this quote for you to meditate on and to think about during this upcoming week. And it simply says this Faith precedes the miracle. It has ever been, so and shall ever be. It was not raining when Noah was commanded to build the ark. There was no visible ram in the thicket when Abraham prepared to sacrifice his son Isaac. Two heavenly personages were not yet seen when Joseph knelt and prayed. First came the test of faith. And then the miracle. Remember that faith and doubt cannot exist in the same mind at the same time. For one will dispel the other. Cast out doubt. Cultivate faith. Think about that as you travel through this upcoming week. And when things come, and they will, and you don't quite understand why you're going through what you're going through, think back on this message and know that God will test our resolve, that he will test our faith. Because many folk are out here saying that they are saved by the blood of the Lamb. But when they are tested, they fall short of the mark. It's easy to say one thing, but when you put to the test, it's not easy to pass with a passing grade. God wants people who can stand the test of time. Just like Job was put to the test losing his entire family and all they own. He never lost faith in God. Jesus spent 40 days in the desert in the woods of the church, dude. Tested by Satan and he is a great example. He didn't bow down. He didn't 
give in to the temptations of devil of Satan. And Satan was right there, face to face, trying to get him to yield to what he was trying to do. God is testing our resolve. What how will you respond? What will you do when you're going through what you are going through? There will be difficulties in life. There will be stressful situations. There will be situations where you just cannot seem to get on top of things. And these are the times when we need to rejoice in the midst of it. These are the times we need to cry out to God. Say, Lord, come and see about me. These are the times when we need to just say in a loud voice, thank you, Lord, for bring me to this test. And thank you, Father, because I know you want to bring me through. So long as we rejoice that we are thankful and you cry out to God, it gets to be too much. That's all right. Because God tested our resolve. And if we turn to Him and thank Him, God will reward us in the end. We may not have a multitude of descendants like He blessed Abraham with, but I, I'm here to tell you God will bless you for your faithfulness. God is testing our resolve. For those of you out there that are tuning in, we want to take a moment and we want to open the doors of the church. And this year I'll call to discipleship. And briefly, just to say to you, to all of us who are here, that if you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you know that you know that you know that you need to make a change in your life, God is saying, come, I stand with open arms to receive you. It doesn't matter how sin-stained you are, but just come and let me clean you up and let you make you into a new creation. So come. If you have not received Christ by way of baptism, you be between churches. Or you have stepped aside for a little bit, you say, Come by a Christian experience. And if you've been away for a long time and you listen in, just want you to know that it's never too late. That you still have faith deep down in your spirit, that you just pushed down and it's completely forgotten about. And so they say, Come by way of a rededication of the faith that you you still have. However you do it, God just wants you to come. And with that said, we want to end with our benediction. Therefore, my brothers, beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen.